So I'm waiting for <coughs> Hello. <coughs> I'm waiting for uh, okay now yes yes hi oh, <laughs> oh, yes yes hello. I could reach hello, hello. No, finally. yeah yeah it's okay it's hello. Not a problem. I'm, I'm sorry for delay no, yes it's okay it's not a problem hello and uh, <laughs> good evening hello. Thank you Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. How is it going? Is everything all right? Yeah, yeah is every, is every, everything is great. So far, so good. And uh, it's good to see you <laughs> in my live station. Also, I well, hope... It, yeah. It's yeah, my yeah. pleasure to be here. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for having this opportunity to, to share my experience. I hope I, I will be helpful to, to someone. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you are going to help uh, lots of uh, <laughs> listeners. And I'm sure that they're they are going to be really happy to listen, and they will enjoy they will enjoy this session too. So uh, we can, if you want, we can start our conversation uh, yeah, slowly, that's and why then we're the here. people can yeah they they can join during the conversation. So what about uh, starting like uh, telling about yourself a little bit? <laughs> okay, sure. Sure. So, uh, first of all, my name is uh, Alena, uh, so name is Runova, and I was born and raised in Vladimir. It's a small city in Russia. It's the closest city to Moscow, and uh, it's a lovely place. Uh, it's a historical place, and um, I really love it there. Uh, so, uh, in, uh, so, I graduated uh, from uh, Vladimir State University, and uh, it was a uh, faculty of uh, English and history teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and after my graduation for uh, about uh, two years, I was working in sales and marketing until I actually get to Turkey in 2012. And ever since I'm working here as an English teacher, uh, oh, so yes. that that's uh, in a nutshell uh, what i can tell you about myself okay and uh, also now you live in turkey by the way you're a russian but you live in turkey for a long time i think <laughs> uh yes it's been eight years uh, i'm here so uh, yes it's been a long time actually yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are half Turkish, we can say <laughs> maybe <laughs> probably yes yes i okay. i can't speak some Turkish but not very well oh, I see I see that okay so uh, what about uh, telling us about uh, your school and your students and maybe the area that you live now mm -hmm. okay so I live in Izmir uh, it's the Asian area of Turkey uh, it's a lovely place it's near the sea and uh, it's sunny almost all, all year long I really city. love it <laughs> Yes, yes, I'm sometimes jealous of myself. Yes, it's a really <laughs> nice place. <laughs> and as for my school, I work for a private school. I can say it's a boutique school. It's not a, a big school. Uh -huh. uh, it has prim primary and secondary uh, school, and uh, they plan to open high school, and I really wish them success in doing so. And so we have... Uh, yeah, we we try to do our best to teach students uh, English, mm -hmm. and uh, we have, of course, we are supplied with smart boards, and uh, we have a nice garden and the gym. So we have quite uh, oh. nice facilities at school. I think uh, also it's quite standard for you know private schools in Izmir, at least uh, that's what I've seen. 
And yeah. I really love my students. Uh, they are really intelligent. Uh, they, their English level is really good. Um, so that it is as our understanding. They can easily understand uh, what I'm saying and what I'm uh, trying to teach them. And uh, so they, that's what, uh, what's the best part because every day we interact with the students and it's mm -hmm. uh, really important to, uh, to enjoy uh, the, the learners as well. Yeah. yeah, it's good. It's good. And this question, I, I want to ask you a question, but this question can be a little bit <laughs> critic for uh, her. <laughs> for, okay. <yeah. laughs> All right. I will try to be as honest as I can. Yeah. Be honest. Be honest. Okay. In this question. So as a foreign teacher, we know that you live in Turkey and work in Turkey. As a foreign teacher in Turkey, uh, can you mention the advantages and disadvantages, uh, disadvantages of working at a school in Turkey? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good question. Let me think. Um, okay, so uh, let me start with advantages. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, being a teacher in Turkey is a prestigious job. And especially being a teacher at a, at a, at a school, because you have some status, we can say, and uh, some respect uh, on, from, from students, from parents. Mm -hmm. and from society as well so it's it's uh, really uh, nice about uh, that fact also what i've noticed that uh, uh, turkey pays a lot of attention to, to to teach students english i know i've heard lots of complaints from turkish side that uh, we still don't pay enough attention but i think that Concerning that, uh, most of the private schools are not bilingual schools. Uh, you uh -huh. actually spend uh, spend a lot of time uh, to teach English. Like uh, you, t you have at least I think ten hours in a week to uh, to teach your students English, and I think yeah. it's uh, it's quite a lot. It's quite a lot, and with good planning, uh, you can uh, really achieve uh, great goals. So I I think that's a good thing. Also, you have lots of, I would say, a bunch of webinar seminars running every year and uh, on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can see that uh, teachers in Turkey spend uh, uh, a lot of time on their uh, educational development and uh, as well as, uh, I mean, for example, publishers sometimes, uh, uh, they, they can come to school and they can... Uh, organize some workshops which is also uh, very great very great so in terms of self-development yeah. i think that Turkey can uh, provide uh, quite uh, quite good courses uh, and this is what i really like so yeah. as for, as for disadvantages right yeah, <laughs> you I want to hear that actually i wonder uh, what what is the you know the disadvantage the site for you Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think I won't be, uh, it, it won't be a surprise for anyone that uh, teachers in Turkey um, really have a, a, a really huge load uh, of work. And uh, concerning that, um, you know, when you work at school, you should understand that you will navigate uh, between, of, like, between uh, yourself, your ideas, your beliefs, your management ideas, uh -huh. what they want from you. Another thing, the parents and the learners. So there are four different parties which you have to satisfy and it's uh, really demanding and you should understand if you're ready for it or not uh, because, uh, I mean, uh, some teachers, I know they, they are not ready for this and they can, in this case, I think private lessons would be much uh, feasible for them because it's uh, only you and your student and yes. you can... Uh, you know, just provide whatever knowledge uh, you believe is right and without, you know, uh, consulting anyone. So you have to be a good um, mediator, I can say, yes, and satisfy all these parties, which is demanding, of course. Uh, so another point, uh, I think that uh, Turkish people need to, not people, I would say system should be... Uh, um, 
a little bit better organized in terms uh-huh. of uh, planning. Uh, sometimes I, I, I face the situations of last minute uh, occasions, last minute calls, last minute uh, events, which you have to take care of uh, very yeah. urgently. You're laughing. Yeah, yeah you, I think yeah. you are familiar with this situation. <laughs> yeah, it's happening a lot, you know, the last minute situations. <laughs> Yes, I mean, I absolutely understand that we, I mean, uh, the private schools rely on Ministry of Education and if Ministry of Education gives you late notice, then of course you you, uh, can um, not give uh, early notice to uh, to the teachers, but the things which rely on us, on our school, uh, should be uh, uh, planned ahead of time, I believe. Because what happens? Yes, so uh, you get a late notice, you have to do something. So you need to use extra forces. Yeah. And that means that you have to put aside some other uh, tasks of yours. Mm-hmm. I don't know whether it's like uh, your family, your child or something. So you have to just put these things aside and focus on these extra things. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. you kind of, for this period of time, you, know, you have this balanced life, which of course uh, ends up in demotivation. Yes, yeah, so you cannot, uh, at, at this, in this case, you cannot perform your best. And we all, uh, I mean, want to, to perform our best, I think. We yeah. want to, yeah. to do our best. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, and so uh, all in all this, you know, kind of all uh, these things, uh, also added up to the point that the teachers uh, are underpaid uh, in, in Turkey all in all in general. Uh, that's what I believe. And it should be mm-hmm. uh, to some point. So uh, the, thing, the amount of time, the effort uh, you spend uh, should uh, be satisfying in terms of uh, pay- the payment as well. So yes. that's what I think uh, also uh, we should all work on. Uh, and so also I've noticed some, you know, uh, uh, as, as we are working hard and there is not uh, sometimes uh, satisfying factors uh, to, to our, to our uh, you know, life, uh, business life, I mean, uh, there is a lot of circulation happening. So one teacher is going to another school every single year, another, another yeah. school. Another and of school. course, you are right. As a, as a result, what we have, like the school, uh, you know, cannot keep the same level of uh, education. They cannot provide the same level of education in this case. Uh, and who suffers? The learners. Our learners, yes. Our, uh, the, 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 Unfortunately, the people, yes. <laughs> yeah, the ones who shouldn't suffer from, from that, yeah. So these are the, the, main, uh, the main things. Uh, which I would allocate right now, which yeah. come, come into my mind right now. I see. Okay, so just one more uh, question. In this, in this, in this case, uh, if you, you know, if it, when you think about it, what is the most challenging thing for you in this period? I mean, like when you compare the disadvantages uh, of working uh, at a school, what is the most challenging one for you? Mm, the most chal- the, among the ones I've mentioned. Yes, among the ones you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, for me, uh, you know, the time is really important uh, because uh, I want to spend quality time uh, for myself, mm-hmm. for my uh, life. And if I spend quality time uh, at home, or whatever, like uh, travel I have or some other things I do, uh, I can spend quality time at, uh, at, my, uh, at, at work as well. So these things are overlapping. And uh, if, uh, so if I can plan uh, some things ahead of time, I think it will, um, it will be really great. So uh, what I'm talking about is like... Um, planning and uh, nice. this kind of last minute events uh, which uh, should be I mean it's uh, not so difficult to, to do so it's feasible uh, we all can work on it uh, just it's important to uh, uh, respect the time of other people mm-hmm. and uh, that will be really satisfying for for everyone the motivation will will rise steeply I believe in this yeah yeah okay I agree I agree with you okay so 
let's let to let's move to another uh, the question. So, can you tell us about uh, you know what have you done so far for your professional development? As far as I know, that you are an English teacher and you are you know you know dealing with education for a long time. So you know. Uh, what have you done so far for your professional development? Can you tell us about your experiences and the things you have done and so on? Yeah, oh, sure, sure. I'd love to. Uh, so uh, at the beginning, let me start with um, the very beginning, I would say. So um, in 2012, uh, I came to Turkey because I found an employment and actually in Manisa is the place where uh, you're living, as I know. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, coincidentally. So uh, I found an employment and, you know, I was teaching for for a while and then I've just noticed that I don't have clarity in my mind. Uh, I just do, I'm doing something, I'm teaching, but uh, I, I started to have many, many questions popping up in my mind, like, oh, am I doing it right? Uh, what's the final target of my teaching what are the stages like we're teaching grammar and vocabulary but what for what's our final goal and uh, so this this sort of questions were springing in my mind and uh, a little uh, while in a little while i decided to uh, that i need some uh, support okay and i applied for celta course and uh, CELTA Great. course really um, in a month they really upscaled my my teaching skills and they answered my questions which I had in my mind. So it was really satisfying, especially the you know this kind of live feedback sessions, observations. That's re that really works well. And uh, in, later, just right after finishing my CELTA. I, I applied for CELTA Yandernes and I finished that one as well because I uh, I work with the young learners and that's the knowledge I need to know, you know. And I've got really nice ideas how to engage young learners into studies and mm -hmm. so it was really, really nice uh, experience. Great. So these are the things I did uh, and then later, of course, I... I spend a lot of time on, um, let me say, on uh, uh, attending different uh, com conferences, se seminars, webinars, and things like this. There were loads of them. Uh, and uh, right now, what I'm doing, uh, I think people uh, may be interested in, because uh, these, uh, the two ways I'm going to tell now what I'm focusing on uh, require no, in, no investment. Like if, uh, uh, because not everyone can uh, really spare some uh, money on CELTA or CELTA young learners courses or uh, any kind of TEFL development courses. Uh -huh. So some, some people cannot uh, you know, spare this money. So uh, there are two things which everyone can do. Uh, first of all, uh, to find a group of like-minded people uh, yeah. to uh, to do so i have created a group on facebook teacher uh, teacher skyrocket and uh, so i uh, i run it together with my uh, teacher partner uh, her name is rosa and the idea behind it is to make people um and not people teachers cooperate so this mm -hmm. uh, collaboration, because we cannot learn in vacuum. That's what I, I mean. Uh, while all, uh, teaching uh, all these years, I understood uh, we cannot, uh, uh, you know, learn in vacuum, in isolation. We need each other. Yeah, you're right. So, and that's the thing we are teaching our, our students. We teach them, uh, okay, students collaborate, work in pairs, work with partners, but... Uh, <laughs> Most of the time, we're not doing it ourselves. Uh -huh. So that's what uh, is important. For example, you have a group also on Facebook page. So everyone can find uh, some group which will uh, address their needs. So they just need to search for it, go uh, on Facebook or on Instagram and find it. So yeah. that's uh, how we can help each other. And another thing... Um, maybe it will be also interesting for your uh, 
listeners, uh, for your followers. So, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm also, as a part of my professional development, I'm uh, doing my master. And yeah. uh, okay. it's... It's in progress right now, yes. Uh, so I haven't completed my thesis yet, but what, uh, what the topic of my thesis is uh, bloggers, uh, teacher bloggers. So ah, I... Yes, interesting, interesting topic too. <laughs> yes, I investigate uh, teacher bloggers and I um, actually uh, found out, I can share you some insights of the research findings. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it's uh, not finished yet, but still, I can share a bit. Uh, so, firstly, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Firstly, uh, well, it uh, really upscales. If you do a blog, it, uh, the blog can really upscale your uh, language skills. For example, if you write a post, you need to improve your writing. If you have a video blog, you need to improve your public speaking and speaking skills uh, eventually. So uh, that really upscales your language skills. And uh, depending on, on the target uh, you uh, created the blog, uh, you can upscale your uh, teaching strategies. If you are mm -hmm. searching for something, for example, if uh, your blog is on teaching strategies, if you're searching for it, for sure you will uh, uh, skyrocket in that skill. Uh, and another aspect uh, I would say is many teachers uh, started to, to do blogging um, uh, and they found out that they have improved uh, motivation. Their motivation is rising up and their learner's motivation is rising up in case they are shooting these videos uh, for yes. mm -hmm. uh, the videos of their learners and then sharing it. Mm -hmm. And this is the uh, fundamentals of uh, well-being, uh, teacher and student well-being. So we are getting satisfied of, uh, with our job, actually, yes? So we, uh, we can be motivated. And at the same time, many schools uh, started to use it as well. So they ask uh, teachers to do it on a regular basis, uh, uh -huh. to, share, to share their um, uh, insights from uh, from uh, what they are doing uh, in the lesson and it's actually a great promotional tool for the school because the parents see what they their children are producing that they can speak and they see uh, like what is going on at school you know that's exactly. uh, a great that's the great thing. That's what uh, actually this uh, school management, what, what the school management wants. And the last but not the least, uh, many teachers uh, tend to have a blog as the way to earn money. Uh, yeah. So uh, they kind of, um, you know, promote their skills, uh, their courses, uh, the app they have created and use this page as a brand marketing page. Uh, to sell yeah. and I think that this is also really a great uh, concerning that uh, I mean of course uh, we all need some uh, you know additional income uh, and we'll, we usually give uh, private lessons right so yeah, and sure. of also uh, the, the interesting part uh, I uh, got some uh, uh, while uh, having interview with the participants, I got some insights uh, uh, from the, the strategies and pedagogies they use to do the blog to reach the uh, uh, the followers, the amount, uh, the high amount of followers, and uh -huh. I'm going to share it as well. And I think this part is going to be a, a hands-on part of my research, and uh, so I think this uh, is worth reading. Yeah. It's good. It's very interesting topic. It's very interesting topic, really. And I hope you compl and you, you complete your, you know, the thesis as soon as possible and share the results with us. Finger crossed. Yeah, finger crossed. Yeah, you are right. And so, <laughs> and so, what is it here? And I think Fatma says something. I think she couldn't get your master about. She said, "What is your master about? What? What is your master okay. about?" Uh, my master uh, is about uh, teacher bloggers, the effects of blogging on uh, teachers' professional development. 
Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting. This is the topic. Really. Mm -hmm. And there are many, many, many effects. Uh, I, I've mentioned just a couple of them. So there are basically like two ways which you can do for free. Like you can start a blog uh -huh. and you will just develop uh, steeply. Or the other method, um, you can find like-minded people, find the group uh, and collaborate with them. So these are, this costs no money, but you can still... Uh, you know, improve yourself, develop. This exactly. is great. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And uh, what I want to ask you the next as, as the next question. You know, uh, as a whole world and also as a Turkey, we are really you know in a bad situations because of the COVID nineteen. And uh, do you provide online lessons due to the COVID nineteen now? Yes, I do. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you do. Okay. And what I actually, uh, what I want to ask is, in this period, and how do you reach your students, and how do you assess them, or and also, do you think you can reach uh, every of your students? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good question. So, um, at the beginning, let me start uh, uh, from. Uh, my experience from yeah, my sure. feelings, maybe. So at the beginning, when I start teaching online, it was uh, I was really excited, and it was uh, a bit stressful period, of course, for all of us. But mm -hmm. what I've noticed is that we can really benefit from that uh, learning, from online distance learning, mm -hmm. uh, because students are uh, focused on your <clears throat> voice. Yes, and being being focused on your voice they are less distracted from one hand uh -huh. and the ones who uh, who are already motivated they uh, show progress uh, yes. but of course uh, if we uh, don't let the students don't ask the students to open the cameras uh, we cannot really uh, reach some of them and we can uh, not really be sure about the things they are doing online uh, whether they are just opening this page and just uh, going somewhere mm -hmm. else and mm -hmm. uh, something like this so yes it's uh, really hard to uh, take control over students while, while online teaching and we should all um, accept it uh, but I think that uh, here we should really work with parents and with uh, with counselor and uh, do our best to, su uh, to, to support the student uh -huh. about this. So about evaluation, normally, uh, yes, I prepare the quizzes and exams and I do formal evaluation. I give the, the marks to my students. Uh, but right now during this period, uh, my school didn't ask me to, to do formal evaluation, but I still uh, do formative evaluation. I see. So mm -hmm. what I mean uh, by this, of course, I uh, assign some homework and I, uh, you know, kind of evaluate it during the lesson. And I use online quizzes to do uh, evaluation as well. So if they have uh, covered some topic, uh, I say, okay, students, let's go to that website and let's see uh, how well you understood the topic. So that also I helps see. me to, 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 to keep an eye uh, on their achievement and it helps uh, them to see if they uh -huh. uh, uh, understood the topic or not. Uh -huh. I see. Say so you parent guiding teaching. Yeah. Parent kind of. guiding teaching. Yep. Uh, yeah, you, you need to, uh, of course, uh, guide parents uh, about this, uh, I mean, during this period, because they are young learners and uh, mm -hmm. the, the parents are uh, responsible and they uh, can help us to take control over uh, all, this, all the students. Yes, uh, Fatma, I think, yes, ask yes. this clarification. Yeah. Okay. Can I move to the next one or you want to say more things? I think. I, no, I think, I think we can okay. move on. Okay, so <clears throat> and in this period, like what kind of activities do you use during this period? And can you give us some examples about the activities you use? Like if you can do it, like if you can tell us some activities 
Yeah, sure, I can share some examples. So uh, with secondary school, I teach both secondary and prim primary school students. Mm -hmm. So with secondary school, I usually assign some homework, some reading and exercise mm -hmm. uh, for them to get to know the subject at the beginning. And when they enter my class, uh, we, I prepare PowerPoint presentations and we have discussion on the things they, they've learned, they've read. And uh, so uh, by this mean, uh, of course, when the students are prepared, uh, they are familiar with the subject, they can uh, 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 speak uh, freely about it. And it also helps uh, me to clarify the concepts which they couldn't really uh, understand. Uh, uh -huh. So and to, to, to clarify some uh, something. So this is uh -huh. uh, one strategy I use. Also, I ask. Uh, I, sh I sometimes I share Google Doc with my students, uh -huh. and I, I ask them to uh, uh, pick up uh, the unit, no, no, the pages of the unit. Then let's say um, two students uh, may pick up. Or, the same page and then the other students. So they kind of work in group from one yeah. hand and uh, right. from another mm -hmm. hand, they uh, like choose uh, the, the topic they would like to make a presentation about. And the next lesson, they, uh, they are uh, the teachers. They teach us uh, the lesson. And that's also quite nice. uh, beneficial for, for the learners. That's what I've noticed. And as for primary, uh, the... For the primary school, I use uh, handcraft activities, but uh, you know, in this case, uh, I ask the students to give the instructions. Uh, so I don't, uh, uh, I want to decrease teaching talking time, and uh, I ask the students to give instruction. Let's say fold along the, uh, uh, you know, regular line, cut along the dotted line. Uh -huh. all landwise fold uh, the other way around okay so they kind of assist each other in this case so they give instructions and also i do some uh, you know video based projects so i assign um, for example with the they are really you know they are really useful the video based like i like exactly. them yeah yeah exactly exactly so you can just assign some uh, some subject uh, to them and ask them to prepare videos and then you can uh, evaluate and then you can also um, like they, they will uh, you can ask them upload it to the system uh -huh. uh, the, the system you use I don't know zoom or uh, we are using Microsoft teams and they can uh, see uh, and evaluate their friends' answers, uh, the, the yeah. videos, get the uh, click on likes, and then you can also make them, um, you, you can, uh, the, whoever gets the most number of likes um, uh, can get uh, some praise from you or some kind of bonuses, whatever you can come up with, just to stimulate, just to motivate them to do it You're better. You're right. You're right. So these are my strategies. I see. Uh, okay, so very good and very, <laughs> very uh, and nice to you know to take the students' attention and follow them in the, during the lesson. And they're nice ideas. Thank you. And so another another uh, the question that I want to ask you about the you know the about the future of education. Your ideas. I really wonder what what do you think about the, your general ideas about the future of education. What do you think about it? What's what it's gonna be after this time. Yes, that's a good one. I yeah. think everyone has it in their mind what, yeah. uh, what's uh, gonna the, happen with education. Exactly, all the teachers all around the world, they, I mean, they, they, they think the same question, like how it's gonna be the future of education. So will it be the same or will it be the different? So what do you think about it? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that COVID, uh, really changed our view on education and it uh, gave us a chance actually to try uh, to try online teaching mm -hmm. uh, 
And actually, uh, that's one of the skills. Uh, digital literacy is one of the skills which we have to provide uh, yeah. to our learners. We have, we really need to teach it because uh, you know we rely on twenty first century skills like yeah, critical yeah, yeah. thinking, right. collaborative uh, collaboration, and uh, things like this. So digital literacy is a part of it. So we have to uh, give our students opportunity to. Uh, to develop these digital skills as well, because that's, they need to know uh, how to do research and they need to know how to uh -huh. use um, online sources. And uh, I think that uh, COVID-19 gave us uh, this chance to, to, uh, to give it a try. And so, to be honest, I think that um, the, the schools who decide to implement uh, yes. the tools mm. we are using right now, let's say Zoom or Microsoft Teams, yeah, yeah. whatever exactly. tools we are using, they, uh, they will uh, be the leaders of the market of the future. Mm -hmm. uh, the schools who uh, just, you know, will go back to traditional classroom, yes. uh, I've, to my belief, they have no future because in long run, I, I think we... Uh, we will have uh, kind of hybrid learning or, I don't know, online teaching, uh, flipped classrooms. So we will uh, surely have some changes. That's what I, I predict. Yes. You mean, yeah, more or less you are right. And I believe, I believe the same things. Maybe there, 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 there will be, you know, time to time, maybe online teachings comes up. Yeah. In this case. I think okay. it will be more, more and more common and at the end we will have to uh, make decision and moreover like of course it's uh, upsetting to say but uh, the viruses may get more frequent and the schools are at the high risk and uh, yeah. it, uh, I mean it may happen again and we have to be, uh, have to be ready Careful. for everything maybe we will yeah. really have to adjust our education to, to these new conditions. Exactly. But life, sure. what life will show. <laughs> yeah, we don't know actually what's going to happen in the future, but these are just our guess about the future. I hope, yeah, and everybody, I think everybody hopes that it's going to be normal again as soon, soon. But we will see. Okay, so and what I want to ask, and almost we are getting the end of our live session, so uh, can you tell me, uh, I mean to the listeners, and one... Uh, one, uh, one, just one suggestion for the distance educations. What do you suggest? Only one suggestion. Only one. Yeah, one okay, that... suggestion <laughs> that you All can right. give us for distance education. Uh, of course, if you want, you can give more suggestions. It's your choice. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I will give a couple probably if you okay. allow me. Yeah, sure, sure. Take your time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, but I will be short, don't worry. So uh, <laughs> It's okay, we have time. <laughs> yeah, first of all, uh, we should all understand that and accept the fact that we cannot reach every learner um, while online uh, <coughs> teaching. And we just need to, um, you know, to accept this truth, this reality. Of course, we can do, we need to uh, do whatever we can uh, mm -hmm. to, to reach the student, to uh, by talking to the parents, uh, school counselor, and uh, you know, trying to reach them and help them. But we have to uh, just, you know, I think um, it's important for us to accept it because it, it yes. uh, affects our well-being, teachers' well-being. And the mm -hmm. second thing, we uh, need to delegate uh, the things to learners. Delegation is the key here. So uh, delegation, uh, like, uh, for example, you can assign the projects, the video-based projects or paper-based yes. projects or uh, creating online quizzes. And uh, in this case, uh, we will uh, create autonomous students uh, who will be active in the classroom. They will get prepared at home. They will, uh, will have time to, to, to do research. So they... Um, uh, this will increase the level of their preparation mm -hmm. um, and uh, it will decrease the teacher talking time, what we want to, uh, to have as a result. We want our students to 
uh, to uh, to speak in the last one. So these are, I think, two two main uh, points I would like to share. I see. Yeah, thank you very much. You're yeah, great, great, great for your great suggestions. And I think uh, that's all. And if that's all for uh, today. But if our listeners have got any questions for you, and we can take them. If not, uh, <laughs> we can uh, stop our live session here. And I would like to say, uh, I think. Let me just just wait couple minutes do we have any questions let me look here sure, let's have a look. Exactly. yes uh, if you if you'd like to ask me something uh, it would be great uh, i would love to have a conversation with yeah. you yeah and there they say thank you very much for your insights elena <laughs> they say thank you, thank, say. thank, yeah. you Nilgün. thank you yeah they are really nice yeah thanks a lot okay i think we can uh, slowly end uh, our sessions and Thank you very much, really, for your uh, great uh, ideas and for your experiences. And uh, it was really nice. It was really nice to have you in this live session and listen to your, uh, you know, experiences and your ideas about this, you know, the online teaching, about your thesis and your ideas about future of education. That was really great. And I'm sure that uh, our listeners also They love to listen to you, but there is, I think there's a question. Just a moment. I saw a question. Yeah, yeah, think also also, yeah you can look. Uh, let do, me scroll. A bit. Yeah. Do you think, do you think the up, upcoming generation will be demanding online lessons or one to one? Mm. Well, yeah. that's a good nice question. question. Yes. Nice question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Well, I, I think that um, individual approach uh, will get uh, more common in the future because really we all have different uh, abilities, skills, and we, uh, we need to find a teacher who can address it and address our skills. So I think that uh, one-on-one uh, teaching will mm -hmm. get more and more popular popular and uh -huh. actually one-on-one teaching via online uh, will get even more popular this, uh, in the future and it's getting more and more popular so it's kind of combination I would say yeah so, I thank you so. for your question yeah nice question really thank you yeah the one-on-one -on -one teaching I think will be more popular as you said and in, in the future in you know in this kind of situations will not you know the get better so for the men will be you know increase about one on one yeah and uh, due to the uh, the virus situations you know also most of the uh, people will still have this uh, bias to get into group so exactly. to to get this uh, you know group environment and even if it's a group they will prefer to have it online Yeah, exactly. Uh, not to, not to interact uh, physically with one another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I hope uh, these days will pass soon, and we, we all yes. return back Hopefully. our normal life. Normal life. Hopefully, we hope. sure, sure. I, uh, I wish so. That's all for t today. I mean, for today to ask you, and I mean, we had also questions, and thank you very much that you shared your ideas with them. And also, yeah, he also, Sinan also thanks to you about your answers and also thank you for the event. And that's all. Thank, and thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Yes, I think uh, it was very useful for, yeah, uh, really for useful. me even. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I got yeah. also some insights from you. I got some uh, nice atmosphere and exactly. uh, so you're a nice host. Uh, so I thank wish you. you all the best uh, to thank get it going and growing. And I think that Uh, teachers need to talk and uh, they, they should have the opportunity uh, to share the knowledge, the skills uh, with other teachers and uh, yeah. with other parties. Yes, that, that's great. <laughs> yeah, that's a great opportunity, you. good idea. Yeah, yeah I thank hope you. We, will, we will do it. We will continue this one with uh, different countries. And next week, next week, by the way, I have a teacher from Peru and she's wow, also would yeah, be interesting. She's online. So Becky, 
I mean, if you see that the, her name, she's smiling at now. Next week, oh, yes, we yes, are, I can see. She will be our guest from Peru, and we will try ideas about uh, education and her life. Okay, so, so thank you very much one more time, Alena, being my guest. Thank you. And sharing your lovely you idea. And enjoy the rest of your night, day, and night. I think it's almost 10 o'clock. <laughs> We can say night, I think. And that's all. <laughs> yeah. All right. Take care. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye. Bye, everybody. To all participate to the this sessions and come and listen to us. Thank you all also. And see you in the next session for the next Saturday. Bye bye for that time and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.